multi-hop propagation here. If we can scroll down that, Giselle. <coughs> so uh, multi-hop propagation is this is uh, um, when your radio signal goes up in the ionosphere, comes back down uh, and uh, reflects off the Earth's surface, goes back up again and comes back down again. So here's our, uh, uh, for example, uh, here's our uh, radio tower here. Uh, and this is multi-hop here. Uh, it goes up in the ionosphere, comes back down again, goes up again, comes back down again, goes up again, comes back down again to our little guy with holding his radio uh, up by his ear. And so that's multi-hop propagation. It hopped a few times to get to, uh, to the station at the other end. Usually this is a very great distance, okay, that it's, uh, that it's, it's done a hop like that. And uh, what happens with your radio signal that, uh, uh, say, when you transmitted, it went up the ionosphere, came back down here. The uh, uh, the station, if somebody was listening right here, uh, say for example, the uh, uh, they would hear your signal come in. They look on their little S meter there for signal strength. It would show S nine, goes back up and comes back down the ionosphere. If there was somebody here listening to your uh, to your radio signal, say it would come back up as S seven goes back up again and comes back down again and say it's S3 here or S5 or something like that. I guess the point I'm making is every time it does a hop it loses signal strength. Okay, because even though it says it reflects, actually what it happens is it refracts. Some of the energy is lost every time it does a bounce, uh, either in the ionosphere or, or striking the air surface and going back up again. So your si signal gets continually weaker uh, to, uh, to that station. Okay. So that's multi-hop propagation, okay? This is single hop here, goes up in the ionosphere once, comes uh, back down to our little guy uh, 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 on the other side of the, uh, of, the, uh, of the world, okay? And then you can see uh, this signal here, uh, it's, it's a high enough frequency that it goes straight through the ionosphere and out into space. And that's for working uh, uh, satellites, the space station, working the, uh, the moon, or bouncing your signal off the moon. So that's what uh, uh, multi hop propagation is. On to the next uh, screen here. Okay, you're going to talk about fading, okay? And uh, if you're a short wave listener, okay, you've heard this from time to time, okay? You're listening to a, um, to a radio uh, signal, say you're listening to uh, Radio Moscow. And you're watching the S meter on your uh, on your radio, you know, and it's doing a, uh, it could be doing a slow fade. They come in really strong, and then they they kind of drift down, or it's getting starting to get a little hard to hear them. Like it's going down like maybe S three or something like that. Sometimes it even like the, the audio will get a little distorted. And then it'll come back up again, and then it'll go back down again. Okay, what's causing that is changing the ionosphere. The ionosphere is not is moving around uh, the uh, ionosphere ionization of it is is changing so it's not reflecting as well or maybe it's absorbing more of the signal so that's why you get those uh, fades like that okay and uh, uh, you can also get uh, um, uh, multipath fading uh, which is when you're if we go back up to the uh, um, to the slide previously here okay remember the uh, okay this is our radio signal tra uh, transmitting and, and um, uh, it's uh, we got a signal going up in one hop, and we got another one coming going in, in four hops to the uh, to the same to the same uh, uh, person here. Okay, and uh, when they do hops like this, it'll change polarization. Okay, so say you're horizontally polarized here, you've got a horizontal antenna on on your uh, on your radio tower. Uh, it goes up here, comes back down. It's vertical now because it's changed the polarization. Okay, and, and um, it goes back up and down again. Now it's horizontal, okay? And then it goes up and, and it, you know, it could be, um, say this one, the one in red uh, gets here horizontally polarized. Uh, this is a, uh, let me back up on that. Every time it hits the ionosphere of the Earth, it changes polarization. So here it's ver uh, horizontal, vertical, horizontal, vertical, horizontal, vertical, horizontal. This one here is horizontal, uh, vertical, not a good explanation horizontal if they if they say this was if this one came down vertical and this one came down horizontal and depending on the signal strength when they arrive at the receiver they could cancel each other out they couldn't hear anything or if there's a signal strength of uh, of one's louder than the other you'll hear a weak signal okay so 
uh, if the uh, if the antenna if the vertical is stronger than the than the uh, horizontal, uh, and because he's got a vertically polarized antenna on that handheld there, uh, you'll hear a, a, a weak signal. Okay, if they both come down horizontal, where my description there at first, they both came down horizontal, they would add to the to the signal. So um, if this antenna was horizontally polarized, he would hear a much louder. He would hear a, a, a signal just as loud as, or almost as loud as when it left the uh, the uh, transmit. So they added to each other. Okay. Go back to uh, fading. Okay. Uh, so that talks about uh, arriving waves may or may not be in phase with each other. Okay. So I talked about selective fading. That the the uh, the, uh, the signals arrive by uh, uh, different paths, and and uh, and uh, one of the paths is changing, so you can you can get where you get uh, uh, that uh, selective fading, where it starts off uh, as a cancellation effect, uh, and uh, or the null may be deepest at one frequency. So this is particularly noticeable in an AM radio signal that you'll lose part of the AM radio signal because AM is very very wide for a, uh, for bandwidth on a uh, on a signal. Uh, scatter propagation. This is uh, um, you notice this. Um, you notice this uh, uh, a little bit on on HF, and uh, uh, what happens is uh, uh, you can get uh, you can get scatter uh, in that most of the time your signal uh, goes out from the ionosphere and and uh, reflects back in more or less in a forward direction. It's Say it's going from here to to uh, to Europe. Okay, so it, it leaves here, and, and say it's over uh, over Newfoundland when it hits the atmosphere and comes back down towards uh, European lands in in uh, in, uh, uh, in England. Okay, um, part of that signal, because of the, just the way the atmosphere is uh, in chaos, I guess you could say it's being it's it's turbulent. Part of that signal could come backwards and. Say you land in, uh, say uh, in uh, Quebec, they hear you very, very weakly. They're they're in the skip zone, but they can still hear you. Okay, that's called backscatter. And uh, sometimes, like if uh, if you have a, a directional antenna, so it gets pointing towards Europe, and they can hear you over in uh, in say New York City, which again, for the frequency you're working on, you think that's kind of like in the skip zone, but they can hear me, and I can I can talk to them. And they can hear you very weakly. That's side scatter propagation. So scatter is is uh, is uh, a signal that usually isn't going in the right direction that it's going in. Okay, and uh, they're saying it too. It can also be a signal that's above the maximum usable frequency. And or if you hear a weaker distorted signal above the maximum usable frequency, it's probably probably scatter propagation. Usually, it's signals that. In an area you you would think that you would normally not be able to to talk to again because of the frequency that you're on. Okay. Sometimes on HF we'll we'll get what's uh, called the Arctic flutter, uh, which is, again is the same thing as this uh, as this scatter propagation, but it's caused by the uh, Northern Lights, caused by uh, aurora, and, and uh, uh, when you're hearing when you listen to a radio signal, you hear like it's like fluttering in the, in the background uh, of the audio of the uh, of the uh, the signal, and uh, that's caused by Disturbance in the atmosphere being the uh, northern lights, and uh, it's uh, it's causing that uh, that flutter. Okay, so types of uh, scatter propagation. This is a question for the test. There are forward scatter, back scatter, and side scatter. The sun is very important to us. Keeps us warm. Uh, <laughs> permits life on Earth, also permits great radio conditions, or it can be, uh, it can uh, permit no radio conditions at all, depending on the activity on, of the sun. And, and the activity on the sun is uh, solar flares, sunspots. We like sunspots, we don't like solar flares, otherwise known as sudden ionospheric disturbances. So when that happens, you might as well turn off the radio and go watch TV because nothing's happening on HF. Uh, they happen, uh, well, as we've seen at the beginning of the, the uh, slideshow here, or the, uh, the program here, it takes eight minutes for light from the sun to get to Earth. That's about the same time it takes that solar flare to get here. And uh, 
But it, when it happens, it's uh, who turned out the lights? Like if you're listening on the radio, you're listening to all kinds of stations on the air, and all of a sudden, where'd they go? Somebody unplugged the antenna on the radio, or what? Gone. So, uh, and they're usually gone for several hours too. It could be a few days. <laughs> it uh, depends on how bad the storm is and how many solar flares there are. But uh, uh, when they uh, when they last for hours uh, on end, they're known as solar storms. There's more than one solar flare. Okay. And uh, solar flares are uh, uh, also uh, uh, the mother of, uh, of uh, northern lights. Huh? Uh, uh, when we have, the northern lights are also called aurora. So uh, uh, if there's been a, a solar flare, it sucks for to be on HF radio. But if you happen to be on uh, two meters or six meters and point your antenna north uh, a few hours after the storm, has, uh, after the solar flare has happened, uh, you might have a lot of fun uh, working stations off the Northern Lights. We'll talk about that in a minute. So, um, so uh, the sun su sunspot cycle you got uh, you should know is 11 years. It's 11 year cycle. You need to know that. Uh, where they have a minimum and maximum period of ionization of the ionosphere. So it's an 11 year cycle, uh, and it's emissions of ultraviolet radiation. Uh, uh, causes ionization of the ionosphere is it's caused by sunspots on the sun. Uh, the higher the number of sunspots, the greater the radio propagation there is, and this is reported as sunspot numbers. And uh, daily propagation data is, is reported as a solar flux index, the amount of daily activity on the sun. Mike, you're on the QRZ webpage there. Do they have the uh, solar flux index with a picture of the sun on it? Uh, them or uh, it might be Eham that has that, or you can even go to uh, GX Summit. What is that? Anyway, does, does that affect uh, aircraft transmission? Is that right? It, uh, if the solar flare is uh, strong enough, it can affect all uh, uh, transmissions to the point that it can just uh, it can also screw up the uh, uh, hydroelectric transmissions. Um, it, it doesn't happen very often, yeah, but it, getting back into your uh, into your theory or earlier, your basic theory, remember when they talked about a, uh, uh, a magnetic field moving uh, moving past a uh, a uh, conductor? Uh, it, uh, it causes uh, it causes current in the uh, counter EMF. Counter EMF current to be uh, is it current to be uh, uh, imposed on the uh, on the conductor? That's what's happening. Is you have a a huge amount of, uh, of uh, radiation passing by, uh, it's a magnetic field that passes by the, uh, the hydro lines. And uh, it happened back in uh, the 70s. It, it took the, uh, I guess it overloads the, uh, the electric grid and it took the uh, hydro back down there for a few hours. So they can be massive and they can be, they can be ugly. Um, I don't think we see them uh, that much anymore as far as, uh, previously what they used to do is use the white TV because everybody had, Everybody had cable vision back then, and, and you had uh, you had an external antenna on your on your TV. So when the solar flare hit, no more TV for a while, and uh, you know people would blame it on a lot of things, but it was it was a solar flare that would uh, that would do it. On that, right? I've got a huge one on there. Yeah, we'll take a look, we'll take a look at it here. Okay, we're gonna look at this in a minute. This is that uh, Northern Lights, by the way. Uh, Okay, so if we go up to the top here, uh, um, I'm not used to this one here, but uh, anyways, it, it shows, this is the sun here right now, you can see the, uh, uh, the sun spots on it, okay, that's, uh, those aren't flares, so a, a flare will become out, uh, it looks like a fissure coming out uh, like this, but anyways, this is a solar flux uh, index of 91, um, I used to remember what the AK indexes meant, 6 and 3, anyways, 91 is the one you, you want to focus on here. Uh, you usually like to have a uh, solar flux in index over 100. Uh, to, uh, if you get up around 200, it's a lot of fun on the HF bands here. That uh, uh, a solar flux index of 200 means the band is wide open. That uh, doesn't matter what frequency you're on, you're going to be walk, uh, talking to people great distances. So, uh, uh, 
Yeah, that the uh, so they have a there's different websites around here for the uh, uh, the solar uh, report. All right, so we'll go back to uh, right here. This guy here. All right, so we talked about solar flares, VHF and UHF propagation. Okay, on uh, two meters. Uh, again, the uh, that's the frequency that uh, the, the one of the local repeaters here in town is on. Um, VHF and UHF propagation is the typical mode is line of sight communication. Okay, that it goes. Uh, um, um, well, it's line of sight. As soon as it the the, the horizon dips, it, it doesn't usually, usually go any further than that. Although there's times though that uh, if you're uh, uh, your radio signal in the troposphere, the troposphere is cooperating, that you can go further distances. Okay. And one of them is uh, sporadic E. And what sporadic E is, is uh, uh, small clouds of an unusually ionized atmospheric gas in the lower E region. And again, the E region is located at altitudes of 90 to 160 kilometers. And this occasionally allows for long distance communication at VHF frequencies not usually well suited to such communications. And uh, this is a particularly uh, uh, I guess obvious on the six meter band. On six meter band is from 50 megahertz to 52, uh, I think it's 52, 250 megahertz, okay. Somewhere in there used to be uh, channel two on, uh, back when you had a uh, uh, antenna on the, uh, uh, on the outside of the house there, maybe mounted on a, on a pipe or a tower or something like that. And you had the old uh, black and white TV in there. Right there. Remember the channel changer there, yeah. <laughs> Sit on the couch there, you clap your hands, and the wife will turn the channel for you. Who knows this? Yeah, that didn't happen, did it? <laughs> uh, anyway, sporadic E uh, on, on six meters. Six meters is, is a uh, is a fun band to operate. It's uh, kind of in between uh, HF and and uh, VHF in the two meter band, but um, uh, there's uh, not much activity on it until the the band opens up, one of these things can be uh, sporadic E uh, in that uh, um, you get uh, uh, you get these clouds of, uh, of uh, ionized uh, atmospheric gas. And how you can know it's sporadic E is that the band opens in one direction, okay? Like um, that uh, you're not working like uh, a whole bunch of stations in, in uh, um, <coughs> In a very wide area, it's it's, it's usually in a, in, a, in a small area, say like in a, in, a, in, a, in a three or four states or a couple of provinces. Okay. That's usually what uh, sporadic E is, and only in that direction you're pointing your antenna. So, or if it's just a wire antenna you have, you, the only stations you're hearing are coming from that from that area. Okay. Tropospheric ducting. Uh, you'll notice this on uh, on a two meter band. If uh, and it can happen uh, summer or uh, or winter. And uh, what happens with uh, tropospheric ducting if uh, it's, it's usually caused by a temperature inversion. If we have an, uh, an area of, of uh, warm air that's trapped by an area of, of uh, cold air, uh, what happens is you get a, it's more or less like a, a ducting effect, like it's, it, it almost becomes a tunnel. Your, your radio signal gets in this, in this duct, um, uh, say this is the, uh, uh, the, the the warm air and this is the, the cold air that it, it it'll travel along that duct it's just like a pipe and it comes out the end and uh, um, it seems to carry your your radio signal without any loss of, uh, of a signal or very little loss to the uh, to the end of, of where it, it comes out and you get some really great distance off off of that um, how you can tell if uh, if we're having a uh, a temperature inversion or, uh, or or ducting is if we get any fog out in the lake, we're in a perfect spot for this to happen because we have the Great Lakes. We have three uh, three Great Lakes uh, around us: Huron, uh, Michigan, and, and Superior. And if you happen to notice, we got fog in uh, Sault Ste. Marie. There's probably uh, a temperature inversion going on, and, and you can get on two meters, and all of a sudden, um, you can hear repeater stations very far away. Uh, usually with the uh, with your handheld or with your radio at home, and you've got an antenna on the uh, on the, uh, the roof of the house, and you know you can you can work through the repeater here in town. You work St. Joe's, maybe you get down to Petoskey. All of a sudden, you get Traverse City. You're getting out to Wisconsin, Minnesota, and that's because of ducting. Okay. 
or if it's just in one general direction, it might be because of, uh, of uh, sporadic heat too. But uh, the, the tip-off for uh, ducking is that if we get fog, it's happening. And and we you know we had it in January here. We had a good uh, uh, a good opening there where uh, you could work uh, stations uh, quite a ways away. You hear repeaters all of a sudden that you never never usually uh, hear and be able to work it work them. So. Um, Sporadic E is going in the E layer here, your radio signal, this is us here, goes up, back down, ducting, uh, goes, uh, uh, is, is, tra is uh, trapped uh, by the two air masts and, and, and just goes along this way a pipe, just gets in that pipe and wherever it comes out is where you're going to talk to. Okay. Next is meteor scatter. This is cool. Uh, worked this a couple times. Uh, there's about two or three times a year we have uh, meteor showers. Uh, uh, there's one in January, there's one in June, I think there's one in September. August. Uh, <coughs> August? August? Yeah. Uh, so uh, if we have a, and I don't know, if you, if you follow them, they're, at times they're, they're stronger than other ones that mm -hmm. you get, like, you know, if there's, uh, a peak. There, there's a peak of them. Um, so meter scatter, you can uh, you can bounce your radio signal off the uh, off the meter as it's burning up. It's really it's it's really fun. Uh, <laughs> uh, you have to have um, and here's a good uh, uh, here's a good uh, diagram for it. Okay, so you're you're on a, on you're on two meters. You're on a radio frequency. You normally don't hear anything. All of a sudden, you hear these starting to hear these pops, these bursts. They like the, uh, uh, the, squ the squelch is breaking, and maybe you'll hear a voice or something like that. Uh, it's, uh, people that work meter scatter usually work sideband, so uh, you'll be on one of the sideband uh, frequencies. And uh, so you tune down there and, and you start hearing uh, signals. Uh, so if uh, normally our, our range is from here to here, but because of the, of the, uh, of the, the meter scatter, all of a sudden we can hear the station B way over here, say it's uh, down in lower Michigan or something like that, or even further than that. And what's happening is, um, either he is, or like he, say like he's transmitting, goes up into the, uh, uh, into the, uh, into the troposphere, the ionosphere, and uh, I guess it'd be, it'd be the troposphere, and uh, the meteor's burning up as it's, as it's coming down, and the meteor trail is ionized, okay? So it ma it's like a big reflector and it comes back down. So that's how we can talk great distances. The only problem with it is, that's only about three or four seconds, or maybe, if you're lucky, it'll be about 10 seconds. So uh, until, and if you have a good uh, meteor storm, there'll be lots of meteors coming down, so you'd be able to carry on a very short conversation. But uh, I, I found that you have to be very quick when you talk. Uh, you give your, give the guys a call, uh, and, uh, and the uh, signal report, he gives his, uh, he calls back uh, V3 OTL, uh, I think it's S2 is what the signal report is, or something like that. Uh, uh, just to uh, let you know, it's, uh, uh, it's a confirmed uh, meteor uh, uh, QSO, and that's it. And you go on, you find another station and it works. But uh, it is a lot of fun, you hear stations there for uh, a band that's normally quiet, and just for a very few, uh, few seconds. Okay, uh, the next type is uh, Aurora, and Aurora is more common than meteor scatter. It's, uh, uh, a meter scatter is, is uh, <coughs> uh, conditions, and you know what, you don't have to see the meteors. Like if, if, if you think, oh, I gotta stand outside, if I, can, if I can see them going across the sky, it's gonna be a good, uh, uh, it, it's gonna be a good, uh, uh, good chance to operate. You don't have to see them, that, uh, you'll know when you're on the radio that uh, if, it's, uh, if it's happening or not. Um, so a roar is when there's a sword, <coughs> sword, sword, sword flare, uh, and uh, it causes uh, northern lights. Uh, the onset of roar is bad news for HF amateur radio because, as we said, sword flare happens. No more HF radio uh, for a while. Uh, but for VHF, it's uh, uh, a roar becomes uh, pretty exciting because all of a sudden you get tremendous distances off of this. And, and if you have a directional antenna, what you do is you point your direction, your antenna straight north. Your radio signal goes up into the uh, into the uh, the uh, troposphere and is reflected back. Usually, you point north, it works south. Yeah. And uh, uh, depending on the strength of the aurora, um, 
Morse code is, is uh, easy to work uh, Aurora on. Uh, if you get really strong Aurora, you can start working voice. Uh, what happens on Aurora is uh, you, lose, um, you lose the pitch of the, uh, of the uh, signal. Uh, Morse code, which is usually, uh, I don't know if Bruce has demonstrated, it's usually a tone like a beep uh, that you hear. Uh, it's, a, it's a whisper. Uh, it's almost like a hiss that you hear for the, for the tone. The, uh, the, the high pitch tone of the, of, of the Morse key is gone. Everybody talks in voice, it sounds like Donald Duck. You lose all the highs in your voice when you're, when you're talking to the station. It's, it's, uh, it's kind of it's funny, but it's interesting. But uh, it's, uh, it takes all the highs out of your, uh, out of your voice. Yeah, because I don't know what the Aurora does, but it takes it away. So that's uh, Aurora. Aurora's a lot of fun. We had one in, uh, in January, tremendous. Uh, 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 Aurora that uh, worked in stations uh, very far away. Uh, again, I was on uh, on uh, six meters, uh, operating them uh, well into uh, uh, into the uh, mid south uh, United States. Okay, so is there a slide after this one? I think we're getting near the end. Uh, there you go. Uh, again, the uh, uh, there's question the question bank and there's the uh, the uh, website for it. If you go over to uh, Chrome here for a minute. So back on QRZ. Over here. Uh, yes, uh, this is the station I worked. Uh, actually, I'm just uh, sending a QSO card to him. Just mailed it to today. But anyways, uh, Victor Yankee Zero, Hotel Lima. I worked. Uh, this was probably a sporadic e contact because, again, it was like it'd be like going home after the course here tonight. And you, you know, you're, you're sitting in the uh, in the radio shack here, and I got the six meter radio on, and nothing, nothing on, there's no signals at all. All of a sudden, poof, out of the uh, out of the uh, out of the uh, uh, out of the vapor, or whatever you want to call it, you know, you know, all of a sudden this station uh, pops up, Victor Yankee Zero Hotel Lima, calling CQ six meters. He's in none of them, and uh, uh, worked him, and uh, he was gone like about five minutes. I think maybe he worked another station or two, and poof, gone again. So, uh, uh, so, uh, anyways, I, I sent. I was just getting his uh, QSO information to send him a card to get uh, a postcard back from him. But he's got some pictures of uh, of uh, none of it here, and uh, actually, this is in 2012. It's talking about an Airbus 380. They're trying it out up in the cold weather up there. But he's got pictures of Aurora, uh, the Northern Lights up at uh, at uh, at uh, none of it, and. Uh, you can see how spectacular it is. We don't, usually don't see that. Like you might get the odd little bit of green and stuff like that, but you don't have to see it if, uh, uh, to to work it. Be very far away, and of course, if you can see it, it's going to be a much better aurora. That uh, it's it's very strong if it's if we can see it down in our part of the hemisphere. So, that's it. Any questions? I've seen them up in uh, in the tar sands. Okay. You sit there all night, wrapped up like an Eskimo. You went through those nuts. But what, what a spectacular Watching the lights dance across the sky. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Alright, thanks everybody. Thanks. Thank you.